Hello everyone. If you have any questions or any concerns about the exam, please post them into the issue tracker or on Discord. Um, I am recording here a short summary before the exam, uh, just to remind you what to pay attention to. And um, I will discuss the course evaluation, uh, a little bit about the uh, logistics of the exam, the strategy that you should um, use in the exam and what you need to study. So about the course, uh, the course is evaluated, I mean, you, you are evaluated in the course based on the 60% of the internal portfolio and 40% on, on the basis of the exam. Uh, note that the exam is individual and the exam is um, blinded in a sense that the graders don't know who they are grading. So you are anonymous in the exam, so don't provide any unidentifiable <laughs> information in the exam about yourself. So you will have a kind of a candidate number and we don't know who, who you are in the exam. All right, so the exam itself. Um, the exam is going to be three hours. Um, so it's a three hours Inspera exam. Uh, log in to your, to your Inspera and, and, and check it out. Um, it will have um, a table of content, which will uh, allow you to jump from question to question. And also you will be given hints on what uh, the value of individual questions is such that you can uh, gauge your progress based on the points that the given question uh, offers. I will talk a little bit about it in a moment. Uh, coming back to the, uh, to the exam, it is individual and no collaboration is allowed. So we encouraged collaboration during the course. Uh, and we encourage you to work together on assignments, but for the exam, this is individual work and no form of collaboration is allowed. You are allowed to use internet and Google, uh, of course, um, but I will talk a little bit about this in, in the strategy too. So let me... Right, so you, you are allowed to use uh, internet resources, books, uh, API, um, GHCI, the interpreter, all those things. The only thing that is not allowed is asking questions in chats or in fora and like collaborating through social media or whatever means, you know, collaboration could be done. So no collaboration. It is an individual exam. All right, uh, three hours in Inspera. Uh, there is... Um, the exam is composed of um, short answer questions where you just type your answer. You can use uh, bullet points, you can use bold, you can make the text kind of look nice. Um, it also asks some, some questions will ask you to fill in, fill in the text and those questions are auto graded. Um, you need to be precise and you don't want to make spelling mistakes or you don't want to make, um, you know, error mistakes and things like this. You, you will be, for example, asked to provide types for expressions. Um, so for example, if, you know, let's say an expression is five um, and it here is the kind of the space to put the type, uh, you're supposed to type int. Or if you, uh, if you want and you want to be fancy enough, you can put, uh, you can put something like this. Uh, without the the uh, the colon colon uh, the the double um, uh, symbols for the type because that is already here so that that part is already in the exam question and you only entering the the int or the the type information right uh, every time you need to to put the generic type you start with a and if you need to put two generic types then you follow with b uh, so don't use A1, A2, don't use uh, uh, T, uh, don't use any other symbols, use A for the first one. And if, if you need the second one, use B. For numerical types, you can, you can use this. Uh, but for simplicity, for making things simple, we assume all numeric types are int. So instead of saying num A, you can just say int uh, just to simplify the, the notations. Um, so be precise, it's case sensitive and it's kind of uh, sensitive to your typing errors. So if you make a typing error, you know, double check it. Um, 
for short answer questions, uh, we don't want you to copy and paste stuff from Google or from, you know, Stack Overflow or from uh, Wikipedia. Uh, that is not the point. I mean, if you copy and paste some text and you acknowledge it, that's fine. But that will give you the minimum amount of points. Um, for example, if, if there is a question, um, you know, uh, what are monads useful for? Right. Uh, you can copy and paste definition of what monad is, uh, but that's again like a minimum number of points. What we're looking for is you say from your own experience, from your own assignments, how have you used it? And you can say, well, a very good example of a monad is a maybe monad and I've used it to handle errors and I've used it in assignment one and in assignment two in such and such way. Right. That's great. That's a great answer. Copy and pasting answer from Stack Overflow. Not a great answer. Uh, everybody can do that. And that's, as I'm saying, kind of a minimum uh, amount of points. So that that is kind of a little bit about strategy. So I'm um, copy and paste possible, but not scored highly, right? Um, to get kind of a higher scores on the open questions, use uh, your own examples from your own programs. Uh, how have you used certain concepts? All right, Google, yes, you can Google for answers, but paraphrase, it, paraphrase them and put them into your own context. Um, some of the questions focus on Haskell, some of the questions focus on, on Rust, and some are kind of generic, so then you can use whatever language you want. You can give examples in languages other than the two that we dealt with. All right, I will come back to the strategy in a moment. Uh, let's finish this. So some questions are split into sections and the, you only need to do one section. And the section that you do is based on a simple calculation of your um, exam uh, unique ID and um, um, you, yeah, so at the beginning of the exam, you will generate a unique ID for yourself. So let's say your ID is, I don't know, 10,001, uh, okay? Um, then you add uh, a random parameter to it at the end or at the beginning, uh, and you generate a kind of a unique number out of this. Uh, so let's say you generated uh, 10,001 uh, and you've added 34 okay so you have one two three four five six seven long uh digit um unique number uh we ask you to generate a number between four and seven uh so you can eat up one of the zeros uh, the idea is that you will not have collisions with other students it's only you know 20 of you so the having collision in such a large number space is very unlikely so it should not happen uh, especially if you base your um, your randomness on some sort of random number generator. You can generate all six or seven digits yourself using a random number generator. So once you have this uh, this number, we will refer it to as uh, UID. And then for those uh, complex uh, section questions, what you will be asked is uh, to calculate UID modulo some number. So modulo two, for example, uh, if we have two sections and then we say, uh, that will become x and then for x equals 0 you will do do this and for x equals 1 you will do that right uh, so you have two sections and for people who fall under this section they only do that, that part for people who fall under that section you will do that that part so for this particular number uh, if you do modulo 2 um, because it, 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 it finishes with four, you will kind of end up here, which means uh, do that, right? Only. You will not do that part. Um, some, some questions have three choices, so then you do module of three. Some have um, different algorithm. So, for example, we could have a module of six, and then here we could say uh, if x is smaller than three, do this. If x is uh, bigger or equal uh, than three, do this. 
Um, so th that kind of a different simple calculations with modulo. You can do modulo in your head if you can do that for small numbers like two and, and, and three. Most of the time it's possible for larger number like, you know, seven or eight. Uh, if you can't do it in your head, then uh, you can use GHCI. So if you go to, uh, if I say stack GHCI, um, and if you have this six or seven digit number, uh, you can easily go into your terminal and say, okay, if this is my UID, the, the best way is just to have it open and say uh, uh, U UID, uh, yes, I have to do this. And then you can do UID modulo six, for example, right? And then, well, it turns out this this number is perfectly divisible by six. So the, the reminder is zero, which, uh, which works very well. If you do uh, modulo four, it, this number is not, perfectly divisible by four and the reminder is two. So your X becomes two, right? If it, that makes sense, um, great. If that doesn't make sense, um, ask me before the exam in the, in the issue tracker. Uh, this is a little bit tricky, uh, because, uh, you will need to do so a little bit of a simple calculation before some of the questions. Um, but as, as I'm saying, like you can, once you generate your unique ID and you kind of assign it in GHCI, then you can use the module operator. You can, some calculators have a modulo as well. So you can use a calculator for that. So it's basically a reminder of the division between a number and a particular number. And then if the numbers are perfectly divisible, the reminder is zero. If they are not, you have some sort of reminder and that that's what we will use. So I hope this is uh, reasonably um, clear. So here I will say uh, generate uh, generate unique ID um, familiarize yourself with modulo operation. Okay. Um, so that's about the logistics. Coming back to the strategy, um, as I said, you um, try to refer in the open questions to the um, to your own examples, to your own uh, experiences. Uh, the exam is programming heavy. Uh, well, you know, it is a programming course. It, it is unavoidable that you will be asked to write simple functions and small programs. Um, so focus on um, small uh, function implementations first. Most of the functions um, in the Haskell part are very simple. They most of the time can be done as a one liners. Uh, so you should be able to do them relatively fast. And then when you have more time, focus on the larger, larger parts. Uh, time is important. So time, time is an important element of the exam, um, such that the preparation and some of the kind of, uh, um, skills that you have, uh, using your head will pay out. Uh, so if you have to look up everything, um, uh, then it will cost you time and that time will cost you points. Um, so the exam, roughly speaking, is, I don't know, uh, approximately 160 points. Um, and then you have three hours, so you have 180 minutes. So approximately, you could think uh, some, some points, some questions are like in sub minute, uh, sub one minute value. Those are kind of uh, easy questions. So we have some questions which are easy and you can do them like in 10 seconds uh, per point or, or less. Uh, some questions are like, you know, um, yeah, really easy and, and you definitely will do them under a minute uh, per point. Uh, some questions are harder. So some questions may go into like three uh, minutes per point. Um, 
So don't do those first, right? Do all the easy ones first. Focus on the easy points, all the, the, the scores that you can easily gain, and then start working on the harder one. So, so the, the, the curve kind of is not linear, like the, the points and the scoring is not just a straight line. It kind of is easy, easy, and then the harder it gets, the harder it gets, right? So it, it is a little bit um, ra wrapping up, ramping up. Um, so, so focus on the easy points first and pay attention to time. Uh, we do ask you at the end to tell us how long it took you to, to do the exam. And we're hoping the exam is kind of a gauged such that a, a well-prepared student can do everything in about two and a half hours, such that you have a kind of a slack. Uh, but of course, you know, uh, it's the first time you're running the exam, so the the, uh, the the gauging and the kind of the the fit may not be perfect. So um, there there is a section. Um, so on the strategy, uh, second question, uh, second question is not really a question; it's a comment section. So if some things are unclear, or if you interpreted something specific way and you're not sure or if you want to give some additional context or additional information, use the comment section, but always make sure that you refer to the question, uh, but either by the question number or by the question title, uh, such that we know um, what, what you're talking about. Uh, so use the comments uh, for providing exam feedback and for clarifications that, that you need. We will use it when manually checking or manually grading something, uh, such that uh, you can clarify something or make something a little bit more um, clearer. Okay, so time, time is important. As I said, um, you can't look up everything in that time. So if you have to learn everything from scratch, I think you will run out of time. So for example, if you haven't worked with Haskell uh, much, um, and then you have to look up every single type and every single uh, question uh, and so on, then you will probably run out of time. So some questions require you to be efficient. Um, of course, you can look up things, but as I'm saying, it will take time. Same as with the videos. Um, we ask you to watch some videos. Uh, we do ask you some questions about some of the concepts. Uh, so you will not have time in the three hour exam to kind of go back and watch everything. So um, you will need to um, check that beforehand, right? So, all right, so that is a little bit about uh, what to do here. So watch the videos, uh, play with GHCI, uh, check previews, um, ungraded, uh, how was it, um, tasks and assignments, okay, uh, check previous tasks and assignments, uh, check what you've done, um, and so on. Um, most of the exam is Haskell based. So both assignments were Haskell, so um, I would say about 60% of the exam, more than half, is Haskell. So focus on Haskell, uh, that will be the biggest payoff. Uh, Rust, um, so approximately, approximately 60% is Haskell. I would say 30% um, um, so the rest is kind of miscellaneous. So some of it is Rust, not much. Uh, some of it is general programming concepts. Some of it is BPROC. Um, BPROG is small, so uh, I would say approximately, I literally, I think there is only one question. So uh, approximately it's like, you know, two to 3% is BPROG. Um, so there is one or two questions about specifically about the second assignment. Um, there are probably around 10% is um, Rust. Uh, so it will help, but it's not majority. Um, the rest is, yeah, uh, generic. More or less. Um, so, of course, you should study everything, but uh, with the strategy, if you focus on Haskell, that will give you the biggest payoff. Uh, but there are, of course, other things as well. Um, 
what else so strategy focus on haskell focus on concepts and focus on programming if something is unclear or there are issues during the exam use the question to the comments uh, to provide feedback and provide context uh, don't provide comments or context uh, in the text fields which are auto graded uh, we don't typically look at them so if you say oh it can like as i'm saying like for example if we ask you what is the type of this expression right and you say it's int or num a like this then it's a wrong answer uh you either use int or you use num a uh, but you don't do both you don't comment you don't elaborate on the answer you this is a correct answer and that that that's fine right um so another example okay what is the type of this expression right uh, what is the type of this expression and so on so check the type system uh, check some of the uh, concepts that we covered early uh, the books yeah we we do focus on the on both of the books so there are some questions about the books um, there are some programming questions um yeah an important part is about the time so um do focus on the easy questions first uh check which ones are easy uh and then um do do them first uh if you're not sure about the open answer questions write what you think uh you you can't get punishment for writing stuff there uh for the uh, text answers and multi-choice answers if you don't know then don't guess um it's better to leave them out than to guess okay so there is um yeah there is one uh, <laughs> yeah i think that's it i think that i covered kind of most of the of the important parts that you need to know and when you need to prepare for the uh for the exam so yes if you have any further questions or if there is something that needs more clarification let me know in the issue tracker all right good luck uh thank you very much uh yes so so there are, there are two questions um additional to the exam uh one is what do you think how well you are prepared before you check the questions and before you've done the exam that is at the beginning of the exam so please do that question first without checking the questions and and, and kind of assessing how well are you prepared just what do you think before you took before you started the exam what your preparation was and then at the end it asks the exam asks you again the same question, uh, how you assess your preparation after you've done the exam. Please do those two independently of each other. Uh, that helps us, help us to kind of gauge the, the curriculum and gauge the, the content of the exam based on those two answers that you give us. Those questions are not, not graded and it's going to take you, you know, uh, 10 seconds to answer them. There is a final question about the feedback. Uh, if you manage to finish the exam such that you have time to write the feedback, use that question. Of course, if you don't, then th that question is completely irrelevant for the exam. So focus on the exam and ignore the last question, the last question, which is the feedback question. Um, don't do that. But if you finish the exam early and you've checked your questions and you've checked the answers and you're happy with the exam and you do have time, then uh, fill that feedback question if you want. Uh, because that again helps us to gauge the curriculum and, and kind of uh, prepare kind of improvements for the course. So I appreciate that. Okay, so that's that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Good luck, and I will um, I will see you on Discord or uh, try to address questions in the issue tracker. Thank you. Bye.